All right, so this here is going to be the reactions that we see um, amides undergo, and they're going to be hydrolysis reactions. So if you remember, a hydrolysis reaction is whenever we uh, break a bond in the, uh, in, the, in the presence of water. And in this case, again, it occurs uh, with an acid catalyst, which is the same thing we saw whenever we were looking at an ester hydrolysis um, in an earlier part of the chapter. So amide hydrolysis is a little bit trickier because the hydrolysis can occur with, it needs a catalyst, and it can occur with either an acid catalyst or a base catalyst. And it actually, the type of catalyst you have actually um, has an impact on the products you form. So this is one of the trickier things I really think that we do all semester. So if you can get this, it's really a good sign of your understanding. So I think the simple part, or I shouldn't say the simple part, the simpler part of all of this is understanding how the substitution type reaction occurs where we're basically going to be trading places. So this is very similar to what we do with an ester hydrolysis. And let's just kind of review how we do that. We're going to start with identifying the two regions that are going to switch. And uh, on, the, on the slide, you can already see it's going to be the amide, which is in red, and the OH, which we can see in blue. All right. So the idea here is, um, once again, in the amide, the carbonyl group, which is this part here, and the carbons attached to it don't stay, and we're going to end up breaking, we're going to break the bond, the the amide bond. For an ester, we broke the ester bond. For the amide, we're going to break the amide bond, which is basically going to be the bond between the carbonyl, and in this case, the nitrogen, and for an ester, it was between the, the carbonyl and the oxygen bond. So that's the bond that's going to break, and our, in this case, the NHCH3 group is going to leave, and in water, we're going to write out the H and the OH, and those two place those two groups are going to trade places. So in this case, the NHCH3 is going to join with the H+, and the OH is going to come over here. And that gives us the two products. One is going to be a carboxylic acid, right? And that's where you're going to have the C double bonded to O bonded to OH. And then the other one is going to be an ammonium salt. And this is, I think, the trickier part here, because if you look at this, um, if you had the NH, I'm going to write it out, NH, and then a CH3 on this side. And then we're going to add it to the H, right, because we said it's going to be adding to this H. So that's going to be another H. You would think that's going to be the product, and that would make sense because we know that nitrogens usually have uh, three bonds in a lone pair. But here is where the trick comes in. The trick in this is the fact that we have an acid catalyst, so right there with that HCl. So because this is done with an acid catalyst, there is going to be some extra acid in, this, in the solution. So if you remember, amines are bases. Well, an amine, as a base, is going to react with an acid to grab an extra H+. Plus. So basically what happens is we have an extra H there, and the whole thing takes a plus because that hydrogen from the HCl kind of, it's not specifically that hydrogen, but it's the fact that the amine is present in an acidified solution, and that makes our product here not just the amine, but instead we're going to have the ammonium salt where we have basically an H from the catalyst and a Cl from the catalyst. So in the past I've said that catalysts aren't involved in the chemical reactions, and that's still true. These, the HCl isn't specifically involved in that reaction, but it's because that solution is an acidified solution. There's just extra H's and Cl's around. And that means that whenever you would naturally form, I'm going to erase this down here, right? So that's what you would naturally form whenever you did the substitution reaction. However, since amines are typically bases with that lone pair of electrons and there happens to be H plus around, it's naturally going to make that ammonium salt, all right? So that's what happens in the presence of 
an acid. So now we do that same reaction in the presence of a base. So let's go through here, and this is going to be our amide with the NH2. This is going to be the OH on the water, right? We're going to break that amide bond there, and we're going to trade places. So the OH is going to come over here, and you're going to make your carboxylic acid, and the NH2 is going to come over here with the H and make NH3. Now, in this particular case, though, we have a base catalyst. So in this one, we're going to have a base. Okay, so the products here are going to be the amide, which started off as, or which started off as the amide, and it's going to be converted to a carboxylic acid. C double bonded to O, bonded to OH, right? That's what happens if you make the switch. And then the other product, the amine type product is going to be N. So that's the NH2 that we started with, and then it goes with the extra H that it goes with. All right, so just to clarify, right, the, this part down here comes from uh, this carboxylic acid, comes from that part of the amide plus the OH that's here. And then the amine that is formed over here, in this case ammonia, um, is from that NH2 that's there going with that extra H+. However, you'll notice that the structures that I drew don't match what was initially kind of on the screen. And again, the reason has everything to do with this NaOH that's here, right? So that NaOH means that it's a base. The, so the reaction is occurring in a base. Well, down here we have an acid, right? This is a carboxylic acid. So guess what happens when an acid is present along with a base? There's a reaction that occurs. And this is a reaction we looked at earlier. Whenever you have a carboxylic acid reacting with a base, what you have is basically a second reaction. I'm going to draw it up here. Right, and here's our carboxylic acid plus the NaOH. And what you get is the H from the carboxylic acid reacting with the OH here, and that's going to make water plus a salt. And the salt is going to be the carboxylic acid part without the acid, so that's going to be minus, and then the Na plus, which is left. Right? And that was what the product that was originally drawn on the screen before I made a mess of this whole thing. So, again, an amide can be hydrolyzed in the presence of an acid or in the presence of a base. And you're going to do the same thing where you do the substitution and trade places with your two groups. But then whenever you get to that point, you have to look to see if it's an acid. You have to make sure both components are drawn in their acid form. So, in other words, if this were an acid, I'll go back to the previous slide. Whenever it's an acid, you're going to have an acid and then your amine that we make is going to be in the conjugate acid form. So basically we went from this and it grabbed a proton to form that because the base, this is a base, and we're going to form the conjugate acid. Now, in this slide, when in the presence of a base, we're going to do the same substitution, but we need to draw the basic form of everything. So this is the basic form of an amine, right? Because this does has a lone pair of electrons, so this could act as a base, so that's good. However, over here, we actually have the acid form, so we have to draw the conjugate base, which is what you see up here. All right, so all of that said, let's do um, try two more times. So these, this is the same structure. So both of the structures we're starting with, this is formamide, right? A one carbon long amide is going to be based on formic acid but then we change the ending to amide, so this is formamide. And the question is, is what happens whenever it's hydrolyzed in the presence of acid and in the presence of base? All right, so let's start by writing 
This is going to be reacting with H O H. Okay, so what is going to form? Well, we're going to circle our components, right? We're going to take that NH2 and we're going to take the OH and those are the ones that are going to trade places. So now if I want to draw the new structure, I would draw this as the same initial structure that H, C double bonded to O, but now instead of drawing the NH2, I'm going to draw the OH plus I'm going to draw the H and then an N H2. Okay, so basically I took the NH2 that you see over here and I just kind of wrote it as a complete structure over here. And the one thing I wanted to add over here would be the lone pair of electrons. Okay, so in the presence of an acid, right, what we have here is a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid and we have an amine. Um, in this case, we have ammonia. Uh, ammonia is NH3. It's not technically an amine because it doesn't have a carbon-containing part to it, but it's really the same idea. Okay, so this one here is an acid. Well, because we are doing this reaction in an acid, that one is okay. Over here, this one is an amine and it's a base because of that lone pair of electrons. Well, base doesn't exist in the presence of an acid. So they're going to react. So what's actually going to form is going to be the amine we just had, which is a base. We're going to form the conjugate acid of that, which is this. This is going to be the conjugate acid. So those, that there, and that there would be your two products of that reaction. All right, so you have to draw both of the components in their acid form. So now if we go to do the exact same reaction in base, all right, so we do the same thing and we go plus H2O, which is like this, and we draw the products. So I'm just gonna draw them just as we did before. I'm not gonna circle everything because we just did that on the previous slide. All right, so here, is our carboxylic acid right there, and here is our amine right there. So in this case, though, our, our reaction occurs in a base. So guess what? This acid that we have here, we need to form the conjugate base of that because the acid doesn't exist. So the conjugate base of that is going to be whenever we have the proton being donated. So basically what I did is I got rid of that particular H. It got donated and it goes away, and you end up with kind of H, C double bonded to O, bonded to O with a negative charge because it lost the proton, and then you would still have the same amine structure over here because this is actually a base. So again, this is going to be um, the acid up top, and the base on the bottom. And this is the one we want in this one because this whole thing is done in base. And for the NH3 that we have over here, this is actually already a base. So we don't have to do anything to that. So again, whenever you're doing an amide hydrolysis, you're gonna do your substitution, right? You're gonna exchange places for your um, N group here, whatever the N and whatever it's attached to, you're going to trade places with the OH. So you're going to form a carboxylic acid and an amine. All right. And then you have to look at it and figure out what is the proper way to write the structure based on whether or not it was occurring in an acid or a base. And you're always going to have to change one of them, right? In the acid situation, we change the base down to an acid. And in the base situation, we change the acid down to the base. So to clarify, the products on the bottom, let me just go ahead and circle them, would be this and that. All right, and actually anytime you have the anion, which is this guy right here, you would always usually see it with a cation written next to it. Um, but 
honestly, if you can get this part drawn in the right structure and this part drawn over here in the right structure, I'll be a happy camper.